a Cal State Fullerton journalism student reaches for the campus newspaper. But this isn't your typical journalism student. Luis Lemos has multiple sclerosis, or MS, a debilitating disease where people question daily whether or not he can succeed as a sports reporter. I openly take on, take it on as if they're daring me not to. You may be wondering, if Luis's disease prevents him from even opening a newspaper, how could his disease allow him to write for a newspaper? Multiple sclerosis is an inflammatory demyelinating disease of the central nervous system. The central nervous system is your brain, your spinal cord, and your optic nerve, so the nerve behind your eye. And uh, what happens is that this covering called the myelin starts degenerating. And, uh, and a lot of this degeneration is driven by inflammation. A complex disease where genetic predisposition and environmental factors don't align. A disease typically associated with the white demographic. But multiple sclerosis is just as prevalent among minority groups. The difference is the lack of awareness among these groups, due in part to a lack of resources. Because of those issues, MS just has not been talked about, in, for example, in, in that community. And, uh, and, and so, for example, the Latino community may be well aware of heart disease and diabetes because there's been a lot of action to educate about those conditions that are highly prevalent. Uh, but MS has not. Dr. Amesqua contends that this lack of talking and lack of awareness in the Hispanic community often leads to a late diagnosis. And with MS, early treatment is critical. Another issue leading to a late diagnosis is that some people undiagnosed with MS might dismiss fleeting symptoms, leaving them less concerned for follow-up. Symptoms of a demyelinating attack could present as numbness and tingling in the arm, back, or waist, or visual disturbances such as blurriness and eye pain, all lasting longer than 24 hours. Now 35, Luis received his diagnosis at 24, a progressive form of MS that has only slowed, not stopped him. Well, I will admit when he took my class, I was a little nervous about how I could accommodate him and help him complete these assignments because journalism, especially broadcast journalism, there is a lot of physicality involved in it. As I got to know Luis and just saw his passion and his drive, I just, I was really inspired by him. And so, I realize that there are a lot of limitations that he's going to have, but I was really cheering for him to succeed. Achieving that success is a daily struggle for Luis. And as a Titan TV intern, he needs assistance just to get into the studio. One student acting as his personal caretaker, helping Luis use the restroom, refilling his water and helping him drink. Essential functions Luis can't do on his own. Luis's passion and drive can help him in the business, but he does have to be realistic about his limitations. Um, in talking with Walt Berenger, who is the advisor for the Daily Titan, we were really brainstorming how can we support him, accommodate him, and really f help him find that spot that he, where he can be successful. With his professors teaming up to help him succeed, Luis's assignments are actually not his greatest challenge and with his chest propped up by a rice bag, using one finger to write scripts for Titan Sports. Not even this is his greatest challenge. Luis, his greatest struggle comes from Cal State Fullerton itself, trying to navigate a campus that is not equipped for the physically disabled. It was just weeks ago that Luis attempted to use this elevator adjacent to the Titan TV studio when he fell reaching for the buttons. With nobody around, no cameras in or near the elevator, and Luis's inability to help himself up, he laid there stuck for 30 minutes during one of California's record-breaking heat waves.
And because people with MS overheat much more quickly than those without the disease, Luis had to be taken to the hospital to be treated for dehydration. Luis's family says they never received a call from campus officials notifying them of his fall and only learned about it when the hospital called to discharge Luis. In addition to cramped elevators, simply using the restroom is almost impossible for him with much of the campus lacking automatic doors. To get in, he has to pry his way through, negotiating every move and once inside, has to go through the same struggle trying to get out. It would be great if all the bathrooms were accessible. He, he talked to me uh, two or three different things and about accidents to him and the patrons. But I see the other day when I dropped him in the back of the building across the street. He went to the ramp and I, and I saw people come behind him, open the door going through and let the door slam. And I say, they don't see you? Luis's mom Blanca says what bothers her most is how some of her son's fellow students refuse to help him when they see him in need. After nearly falling from his chair once, Blanca tried to get the attention of some students nearby. And the people saw me wave my hands. And they just passed by him and looked at him like that. Like, uh, and they say, you need a hole? You want me to hold or something? Something. Why do you think people do that? Because at that time, they don't need help. But you never know. You never know. After contacting CSUF President Fram Bergy and notifying him of the detriment of the campus inadequacies, the school began working with Luis and Disability Support Services to make some long overdue changes. Luis will likely be graduated before he gets to see those improvements. So he says his fight is for the future students, future Titans. And when they say it takes a Titan, you'll now know why.